So go the biggest or go home is Samsung's new motto, I guess, because this thing's huge. It's also super duper expensive, so I'm not gonna get into who I think this phone's for, but you better be damn sure this is the phone you want. Anyways, yeah, it's big, it's thicker, it's mainly a two-handed operation kind of phone, but it is easier to hold with those flatter sides and display edges. The camera setup looks like some kid glued a bloody Lego house to the back, which makes it wobble like my checkings account after paying for this thing, but a nice thick case should solve that for you. By the way, let me know if you guys want to see a video on some sweet cases for the S20 and S20 Ultra. The pocket TV size 6.9 inch display is fancy as hell. It's got that new 120 hertz display everyone's losing their minds over, and yeah, it's impressive. Samsung's AMOLED displays are nuts. Best colors you'll find on a phone, and it's bright as hell, so outdoor visibility is never gonna be an issue. And I should know, I used to be that kid that stared directly into the sun all the time. Yep. Now, like I mentioned in my S20 review, to use the 120 hertz refresh rate, you gotta sacrifice that QHD plus resolution and drop down to 1080p. On the S20, not even remotely an issue because the display's pixel density is higher at 563 PPI versus 511 on the Ultra. At 1080p on the Ultra, you probably won't notice a huge difference with most apps until you start streaming video content for a bit and then switch back to QHD plus and rewatch that content. I personally watch a ton of video on my phone, so that would and does bug me a tiny bit, but gaming also comes to mind when I'm thinking about resolution. So you'd kind of have to pick high refresh rate for games that support it or high resolution for the eye candy, but you don't get both at least not for now. But yes, 120 hertz is awesome. It's not really noticeable outside of scrolling, but scrolling is something we do like 90% of the time or more anyways, isn't it? The fingerprint reader's all right. Uh, it's the same one as last year as far as I'm aware, and it's still just as inconsistent, but it's snappy most of the time. By the way, I was curious to see if there's any difference in audio quality between the S20 and the Ultra's speakers due to the size differences. And there is. The Ultra sounds noticeably better because there's more room for reverberation inside. It makes sense. Uh, still not as full and rich sounding as Pixels or iPhones though. Uh, it's snappy. You know, it's a fast phone. Snapdragon 865 and 12 or 16 gigs of RAM with UFS 3.0 internal storage. You'll be accessing stuff quicker and hanging on to running apps longer. Plus, it's got that sweet app pinning feature where you can keep up to three apps open and running at all times, which is really useful for so many different apps. Uh, battery life for me hasn't really been exciting or anything. Um, I've only ran this thing in 120 hertz mode because I already know 60 hertz at QHD plus would give me another hour or two. But I usually got anywhere between three and a half to four and a half hours of screen on time with about 30% left at the end of the night. Honestly though, screen on time is such a shitty unit of measurement when it comes to phone battery life. Like, I could get 10 hours of screen on time doing nothing but reading news articles or browsing the web and a completely different result mixing gaming and video streaming. Know what I mean? So anyways, for me, it's all about how many days will it last me. And with the Ultra, I get a day in a morning. <laughs> Maybe a day and a half. No way the Ultra could last me two full days. But with that super fast 25 watt charger, Samsung finally decided to start including the box like everyone else has for the past few years. I plug in the phone before I have a shower and by the time I'm out, it's close to 100% again. So if you think about it, the battery drain isn't really an issue. Okay, so cameras. <laughs> There's a few. Look, there's so many bloody numbers when it comes to this array. To put it simply, it's got a wide angle, an ultra wide, and a 10 times hybrid zoom telephoto on the back. And like usual, images look clean and crisp. Contrast is much better this year. Same with dynamic range. I'm seeing much less blown out highlights. Shadows are handled a lot better. Colors look much more natural too, but I'm still seeing biases with reds and magentas. Samsung really needs to calm the hell down with those colors. Uh, I had a bitch of a time with focus. I know I'm not the first person you've heard mention that, but Jesus H Christ did I have to fight with this thing. Sometimes I even had to go into pro mode and manually set the focus to take the shot. It's been so bad. But when it gets it right, it really gets it right in almost every way. Uh, 108 megapixel photos are pretty useless to me and probably most people. I mean, if you want to capture every detail you can for the purpose of cropping in later, okay, cool. But it's not like you're capturing more color or light data. Personally, I think with the tools Samsung gave us with the other cameras on this phone, 
it's not really necessary. Now, speaking of other cameras, the telephoto camera has a native optical zoom of four times, but then through a bunch of complicated black magic turns it into what Samsung calls a 10 times hybrid optical zoom. And images actually look really good at 10 times, but anything beyond that and you'll start noticing a pretty sharp deterioration in quality. Every now and then I'd snap a 30 times and it actually looked usable, like maybe even shareable, but by and large, 10 times is the most I'd go if I'm looking to share it anywhere. I don't want to be confused with using a three megapixel camera from the early 2000s. 100 times is one of the most useless features I've ever seen on a phone. I don't care what other reviewers say, it's not a cool factor, it's not a party trick, it's not for gathering info from far away. It's just a terrible gimmick. Like, have you seen the images people have been posting of the moon where they show the moon on the viewfinder actually looking somewhat distinguishable? And then after the photo was taken and processed, it looked like a newspaper ink smudge? Mm -mm. Anyways, night mode performs well and gets the job done, but if you want anything worth sharing, you're gonna have to be real mindful of how you use it. Like for best results, at least in my opinion, look for high contrast environments where there's a hard difference between light and dark. Now, the front-facing camera is 40 megapixels, and I'm not sure why. Like, it doesn't appear to do portrait mode any better than the S20 does. I mean, it sure brings out the grain in my beard a lot more than most cameras do, so that's fantastic. But yeah, nothing really bad or good to say. Just fine is the word I'm looking for, I guess. I'm not really much of a selfie guy, personally, so maybe I wasn't feeling as artsy as I do with the main cameras in the back of most phones. Uh, 8K video is another pretty bad gimmick, in my opinion. Yeah, the resolution's there, so it's super sharp, especially when scaled down to 4K. But if you pan or tilt, the footage gets all jittery, like an old man with a tremor disorder. And now I'm going to hell. Thanks for watching everyone, good night. Anyways, with everything said, at the end of the day, the Ultra is an extremely capable phone in almost every single regard. I'm not this phone's demographic, and to be completely honest, I'm not really sure who exactly is, but I am certain of one thing. If you are interested in buying it, like I said at the start of the video, you better be damn sure this is the phone you want. Well, I think that does it for this one. As always, hopefully you enjoyed the video, and if you did, maybe show me some love with that like button. Subscribe if you're new to my stuff, and don't forget to follow me on Instagram to see what I'm up to next. Thanks, as always, for watching, and I'll talk to you on the next one. Cheers.